three, two, one. Shalom friends, welcome to the channel, Dr. Tovia Bok Shmuel Chantal, welcome to the theatre in Caesarea, Caesarea, I'm sure you've heard about it, but today we're doing something completely different, and it's something you can only do here, because we are going to go under the water, under the sea, national park, under the waves of the sea in the Mediterranean, why there, what's there to see, surely the good stuff's out on the land, no? Well, we're going to see Israel's Atlantis, a 2,000 year old metropolis buried under the sea. 2,000 years ago, there was a little village on this site, and your good friend of mine, Herod, came and said, This is the place where I'm going to build an entire Roman uh, city with everything a Roman city has theaters, amphitheaters, hippodromes, temples, and I'm going to build the largest port in the eastern mediterranean and herod as we know wasn't just someone who talked the talk he walked the walk and of course it's good to be the king because he him and ten thousand slaves put this vision into reality right but there wouldn't be a commercial center of caesarea caesarea unless there was a port now that's the reason we're going to run you on the coast we'll show you some of the archaeology but the point of it is to, is to get under the sea and to try and figure out how was this possible how to create a port on a flat coast and there's a lot of te technology behind that and we're hoping a little bit choppy out today but uh, we can show you some of the antiquity beneath the sea so enjoy it with us thank you again for following along please remember to subscribe to the channel there's plenty more exciting stuff coming your way we're only scratching the surface to be honest uh, we're almost a year into doing these vlogs really looking forward to even going deeper and further and as you can see that's what we're doing today who would have thought a tour under the sea. Let's go and have some fun. Yalla. Check out this archaeological garden. All of the remains of Caesarea of 2000 years ago. Always love this site. Incredible. Just look behind us here. You can see the remains of Herod the Great's palace. But this is a place to be seen place to enjoy and who would have ever thought that you have a swimming pool you see that square structure there carved out into the bedrock into the cool car of the beach stone guys it's all about three things location 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 this palace is right next to the two cultural hubs of the city the roman theater behind us over there and the roman amphitheater hippodrome over there so after a hard day's work of the horse races with the entertainment, you retreat to your coastal palace, complete with stunning mosaic floors and its own amazing pool complex. And you hear the sound of the ocean waves crashing in the background as you sip your wine on your triclinium right next to your reflecting pool in the middle of your palace. How good is life? This guy has really something else. Not you, here on. Um, so, <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to put on the gear and uh, let's go on our first step. There's going to be two sections we're going to reveal to you. This is the southern part of Caesarea next to the theatre being Herod's private palace. But later on we're going to take you to the main harbour, the north harbour, next to the tower of Strathos. Strathos. Oh, there was another tower. Can you hear me? Dada. Better this way. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, here we are. We're almost ready to go, but you have to remind yourself this ain't no normal beach. Right next to us, you can see a pillar from Herod's Palace 2000 years ago. So, what are we going to do? We're going to go on the outskirts of the palace and try and get into the swimming pool that we showed you. Uh, should be possible. We'll give it a shot. Otherwise, the plan is plan B is to go right around the palace and uh, see what we can see. There may be some... I get that. See what we can see. Oh! See. You got that. I didn't get that. See yeah. what we can see. So, not sure how much talking you will hear. I'll try and point out some things along the way. Otherwise, simply just enjoy the scenery with us. Let's get on these goggles. We're going down. Going down. Hey, by the way, you want to do a run? Do a run in these? Yeah, no. Let's do it. One marks, get set, go. Get a handle of this. Check it out. On the coast, on the shoreline.
Check it out. That is the handle of a jaw. This could be King Herod's teacup, you never know. Let's feel it. It's a comfy hold. So, let the journey begin. Let's find some more of this cool stuff. What have we got here? We got some pillars which were part of the uh, the wall, the Paris style wall going around the swimming pool when they had the huge earthquake in the 7th century the pillars collapsed into the ocean and they're still here today, you can see them right underneath, let's go and take a look Ok, let's go Okay, we've uh, basically just broken through the walls of the palace, heading towards the pool. We're going to take you underneath here and see if we can spot anything. Actually, they look, they look like underwater stairs. Did you see those? This part of the foundation of the palace is support the, ad, the external wall. Unbelievable. It was absolutely revolutionary. So here we are on the edge of the pool. We're going to try and press this wall and uh, take you in. <coughs> here we are folks. In Herod's private pool. Wow, what a temperature he chose. This is like a... Warm bath. Okay. It's lukewarm. What would you say? I'd say this is about 27 degrees. This is the tepidarium. This is tepidarium. the tepidarium. Tepidarium. Oh. Gosh. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. We should go out and shut in the mosaic. Yeah, we will. So, lying here, let's use a little bit of our imagination. Oh, can you hear it? No, yeah, absolutely. Hopefully. Testing, testing. Can you hear me? Okay, so as we are here chilling in this pool, I can just imagine that there would be servants walking around this pool and around the pool there's a, a passageway, right? That goes pretty much to the perimeter of the pool mm -hmm. and uh, you'd have fresh drinks. I'm sure wine. Mm -hmm. I could do with that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need wine, I just need a Coke Zero with some lemon. <laughs> Coming up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, folks, uh, we've just hopped out the pool for a second. And we're going to take you on the perimeter of the pool and just to show you the flooring here. Look at these mosaic floors. Welcome to the triclinium. And this is basically like a, should I say, uh, upside down U or a chet. Uh, chairs on the edge or benches on the edge of the floor where you would recline in the triclinium uh, overlooking that view. The pleasure pool. The pleasure pool. And around where the actual couches were, the designs might be simple. Of course, this is a carpet mosaic with little bits and pieces, and that's where the couch was. But inside is very similar to the mosaics we found both in Herodian and on Masada as well. So clearly had the same interior design team, and they were members of the Jewish tribe. Okay, and Josephus, Yosef Matitiao Cohen, uh, who writes a Jewish historian of 2,000 years ago, gives us an idea of the life of Herod and the choices he had for building his palaces. The importance of this palace, is it much more for the luxury? Is he trying to prove a point of his power? Uh, which would have been his, his favorite palace? Masada? Herodian? It depends who he needed to impress. When he wanted to impress the Romans, which is the city he built for them, named after Octavian or Augustus Caesar. And uh, just further to the north over there, where the palm trees are, uh, he also built a huge temple in honor of Augustus, which we will be seeing later in front of the actual uh, man-made harbour itself. And that temple, interestingly enough, had the same kinds of stone that we find in the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. 
it really depends on who he needed to impress. If he needed to impress the Jews, then you'd find him in his palace by today's Jaffa Gate in Jerusalem. If he needed to impress his Roman friends, then this is the place he would hang out over here on this beautiful pleasure palace between the swimming pool by the sea, by the Roman governor's palace, by the theatre, by the hippodrome. So yeah. I would say dependent on who his audience was. Wonderful. Here you can see the bases of some of the pillars and uh, spot the school of fish coming up. They're coming around. See them? Let's go get them. Check this out, ladies and gentlemen. This is Caesarea's blue hole. I'm going to get in from here and I'm going to take you right around Herod's Palace. Let's do it. <laughs> well, plan B is way too rough to swim around, so we're just crossing on the bedrock here, but have a look at this incredible pool here, this blue, too blue. Just wait for the foam to clear, two beautiful holes, they look like little jacuzzis. Oh my god, some of those awesome little fish in there. We've got Sivoni. Uh, I saw a shark following you. Got blood coming out everywhere, yeah? you see this? There are sharks that come here, not uh, this time of the year, but if you come to the Rabin Power Station, where the warm waters from the power station are pushed into the sea, you get the sharks that hang out there between the months of December to March. So uh, next year we'll take you there. Okay friends, that was a little taste of Herod's Palace. Welcome to the beach bar. My love is in the beach, my love is on the land. Okay folks, here we are, we've arrived at the port of Caesarea. He was literally millennia ahead of his time. Believe it or not, he used precast hydraulic concrete. Technology that was forgotten but only revived in the 20th century when uh, D Day happened and the Allies needed to build harbors very quickly in Normandy. They built something called Mulberry Harbor and people were wowed by the technology. But actually, Herod had already thought of that 2,000 years earlier. What he did is he had ships come into the around here to the flat coast and drop wooden crates into the water with hollow holes in, and then they poured in a special chemical mix of uh, volcanic ash all the way from Italy together with the other chemical components and on contact with the water hardened into concrete and he built these artificial blocks to make the foundation of the harbour and on top of those blocks he built the actual harbour itself if you look very carefully in the ocean behind this beautiful turquoise where you can see black uh, dark uh, stains apparently underneath the water and those are the 2,000 year old foundation of Herod's miraculous harbour it was the largest artificial harbour in the entire eastern Mediterranean shore and a major stop for commerce in the Roman world absolutely incredible folks just a quick stop here amongst the ruins of the harbour uh, to show you the beach stone Kurkar it's the local stone on the coastal plain of the Mediterranean and Herod basically just quarried the stone, cut them up into blocks and that was used to build the harbour here but have a look at these beautiful flowers just growing out, a very succulent flower you can see it actually growing out of the cool car here look at this particularly beautiful one and then just behind me here 
these yellow flowers. So just a wonderful place here that you can spend time walking around looking at the ruins of an ancient harbour and here you can actually notice the street. Just think of it, how many thousands of people would have walked on the street 2,000 years ago. Okay, in we go. Let's see what we can find. Not every day that you could swim back to these capital, I mean these pillars. Wow, from 2,000 years ago. Just have a look at this. These are Granai pillars, and then Granai was born all the way through Sinai. This just shows how much effort is put into making this city the most beautiful city and have it possibly made. Unbelievable. I wonder why they're all lying in the hangar like this. Is this an earthquake or something? Yeah? So here we go. All like a, like a domino effect, they're all lying down from that earthquake. 738 of common era. Okay, let's move on. Welcome to the resta bar, and here we have our focaccia chef. It looks like he's making a pizza. Anyway, the base is simple. Focaccia base, but it's put on garlic cloves, fresh garlic cloves, olive oil from the local kibbutz, and then into the fire and into our mouths. Here we go. Petrus in here, a little bit of parsley, quite a bit there. Let's see what's going on next. And a little bit of salt. Check it out now, it's going into the oven. Awesome place. By the way, this is under the supervision of the rabbinate, it's a kosher place. Look at that, under the fire. And yeah. a resto restaurant in the middle of the National Park of Kesaria. We are looking forward to this. We hope you enjoyed that adventurous off the beaten track, under the water tour of Kesaria and the history of the port. Please remember to subscribe to the channel. Look forward to seeing you next week. We will be somewhere beautiful for you. Enjoy. L'chaim, Shabbat Shalom, Tehavon.